Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and this amazing swell series, I am Aditya. In this video, we will see the concept of components, how we can create a component and concept of props or the mechanism to pass data to that component. Now to begin with, uh, we already have this basic app that we created in the last video. Now what I am going to do is, I will remove all the HTML code from app.swell. Let's remove this, let's remove this JavaScript code as well and also remove the style so that we just have <laughs> a blank template. Now, what we are gonna do is we already have a counter component here. So as you could see, we have it inside the lib folder. Now we can create a separate folder as components and place, place all our components inside that or inside this lib component, we can place our components. Now here, I'm gonna create a very simple component. I'm gonna call it title. So that's the name of my component and each component in Svelte has an extension of dot .svelte, so in this case, Svelte. Now, if uh, you're new to this concept of components, so components are nothing but uh, they encompasses or they encapsulates all the logic related to that section or that uh, fragment of your UI. For instance, let's say we have navbar in our website. So navbar has its own HTML, its styling, and it might have some logic associated with it, like let's say JavaScript logic of, uh, let's say if you're having responsive navbar, then toggling the navbar, or if you have, let's say, activating the link by hovering over with some JavaScript or with some CSS. So all that logic for that navbar we can encapsulate it or we can put it in one file and that file we call it as a component file or we call that as a navbar component in same way we have title component which will just put our heading and you can read more on this on the concept of web components but if you're coming from view or react background components in svelte are similar to what we have components in view or react so here of course, the components logic would be, oh sorry, the component syntax would be, we have the JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, similar to view. So in this case, I'll put some script. Now currently, there won't be any scripts, so I'll just keep it as a blank one. And then we will have our HTML. So in this case, let's say I have an h1 tag. I'm gonna call this, this is a title. Pretty basic component, I would say. <laughs> now, to use this component in our app.view, we first need to import it. Now we import it as a, like how we import any JavaScript function or file. In this case, we are importing this title component. So I'm gonna say import title from, and we want this from title.svelte. So here I'm gonna say, oh sorry, lib title.svelte. Awesome. Now next thing we need to do is just render it. So here, if we want to render that component, we just use it as an HTML tag syntax. Just need to make sure that the name of the component or when we render it, it starts with a capital letter because, uh, and also when you have the component named, you have it starting with a capital letter, it's just a good practice. But when you have to render it, make sure that you render it as with a capital letter because it, in, if you put it as a small letter, it refers to the title tag of HTML. So sometimes you might have components named with inbuilt HTML tags. So it's best practice to have them with capital letter like this and you just use them as a capital letter, starting with a capital letter when you render it. Now you can render it as a self-closing tag or you can render it like uh, the complete closing tag you could say. But for now, as we are not passing any data in it or we are not passing any HTML in it, we just put it as a self-closing tag. Now if you go back again over here, if we see on our website here we have our component being rendered successfully. That's great. Now, next thing is, let's say we have multiple titles on our website. So let's say we have four titles. Now, whenever we render the same component, of course, the same UI it has will get rendered. Now, if we want dynamicity or some flexibility here, let's say we want this to be title two, this is a title three, this is a title four or some other title. Then in that case, we either have to create separate title components, which is actually not a good idea because that beats the purpose of components. We want to make sure that whatever component we create, it's reusable, it's flexible so that it can adapt to dynamicity. So in this case, we just need to make sure that our title component can be flexible. In this case, can I uh, take some com uh, content dynamically? 
Now, how we can do that? Well, we can pass data from our parent component, in this case, app.svelte, to our child component, in this case, title.svelte or title component. And that could be whatever title we want to, it to render. So for in this case, let's say this is title, this is title one, this is title two, this is title X, Y, Z. We can pass those strings over here on this component. And the mechanism to do that, well, we call it as props. So props is a mechanism where you pass data from parent to child and they are mostly read only. So how we can declare prop over here and use it in app.swell. So declaring props in Svelte is very easy. All you need to do is take a variable. In this case, let's call it as a content and I'll give it some default value. Let's say this is a title. Now here, I just need to render that variable, this content. So to render it, you just need to pass it inside the double curly brackets. Sorry, just a single curly bracket. So content, and there we go. And now if I close this, oh sorry, save this, go over here, we have the same title. Now, how we can pass value for this content from our app.swell? Well, we treat it as a HTML tag attribute for this title component. So, sorry, we put it over here, content, and we pass it some value. Let's say this is a title. Then we put it over here, put it over here, put it over here. And this time we call it like this is a title two, this is a title three, this is a title four. Now if we see this, you will see nothing is changed because we have declared the variable or the the JavaScript variable in this case inside our title dot well, but we haven't exposed it so that it could be used as a prop. So to expose it, you just export it like this. So we export it and whenever any variable is export or anything in expo is uh, in this case, this content variable is exported. So now this content has become a prop for this title component. Now if we go back again over here, you will see we have different titles. So again, we just need to export it and then it will act as a prop. Now in the case, let's say in this case, if we don't pass any prop, then and if we go back again over here, you will see we have a fallback value that we passed when we created a prop inside our title.swell over here. So we can have a default value for a prop in case if you don't pass a value to it, or you can pass a value to it from here. Now, we are passing like simple string, but what if we have some variables that we want to pass to the prop? Let's say we have a variable here. Uh, let's say we call it let uh, title string and let's call this as this is a title string from variable. Now, how we can put this variable on our prop? or if we can pass it as a prop to this title component. Well, it's pretty simple. We just say content and here we put double curly brackets, sorry, single curly brackets, and then we say whatever variable we wanna pass. So title string. Now if we save this, if we go back over here, we have our title being rendered. So that's all in this video. In the next video, we will see reactivity and data binding. So see you in the next video. Till the next time. Goodbye.